How do you add your own custom threads to a Libre and get them to be modeled instantly? Let's go through that today. Well, let's get into making these custom threads. And the first thing is to know what thread you're making. Now this entails knowing the major, minor, and pitch diameters, maximum and minimum value for internal and external threads. These can often be found on things like Engineer's Edge or other uh, reference sites that post this kind of data. Once you know the maximum and minimum values of your major, minor, and pitch diameters of your internal and external threads, let's go ahead and access our thread spreadsheet. So we'll go to File, System Options. We'll go to Data Folders. Uh, we can browse and open our thread spreadsheet. So from here, we have a sheet for every kind of thread that we have, starting with ISO course. As you can tell, we have the uh, max and min values for the major, minor, and pitch diameters of internal and external threads. Now in version 28.1 and beyond, we also have this physical thread data over here and information about the threads here. Now there are two uh, kinds of profiles that can deliver modeled threads. You have unified Acme isometric profiles, as well as British Standard and Whitworth. You have other uh, classes of thread like tapered and uh, miscellaneous, and these do not provide uh, physical models, but these two do. So the question is, are, is your custom thread trapezoidal, like Acme, unified, or ISO, or is it something that has rounded crests and roots like Whitworth? Those are the threads that are available to make custom threads out of. So we'll decide on making a thread that is either Unified or Whitworth, and I think I'm gonna go with a Whitworth one that would be more conduit style. So let's go to a Whitworth thread. Now my standard also has a TPI, and it is a Whitworth standard. So my standard is very, very similar to this existing one. So I'll use this as a template, right? I'm gonna right click here, I'm going to say move or copy, and I'll put it right around the last uh, thread tab, and I'll click create copy. And now, here is my second one, so we're going to go ahead and rename this, and we'll call it conduit thread. Or if I want to be more official about it, I can say something like DIN 40430. Now I can start to change the display name. This will be in millimeters, so I can use a little drop down. We'll choose millimeters. We'll give this a, a different display order, right? So this is the 19th thread, this is the 18th thread, and so on. So this should be the 20th one to show up. By changing this number, I can choose, you know, in what order it displays on my list when I'm in a Libre's UI. This has both internal and external values, so we'll leave that. And then TPI is a fine definition for what I'm going for. I'll make sure that this has yeses in all of my columns. And I'll get rid of the information that was copied so I can add my own information. So I can type or paste my own information in. In this case, I've added sizes. Then I can add a suffix. Now I certainly can duplicate, but uh, I don't want to have any special numbers in here, and I don't want to have any formulas in here. Now if I have to do a formula, right, maybe I have to say equals this plus one, and you know move a formula down to get what I need, Why well, then I'll, and of course I do this with a right click, so I right click here, move this somewhere, move it back, and then say, Copy here is values only, and now they're just values and not formulas, right? That's, that's how I can get around using formulas if I have to. But for a designation, I'll say something like equals this cell and this cell, right? PG7. And I can even add a space in there that might look better. So and space and the next cell value, PG7. We'll move this down. 
So there, that, that could be a good designation, but we don't want to leave the formulas. So we're just going to copy as values only, and that gives me just the value of the cell, right? Our, our sheet won't work if we have um, these sorts of formulas. So again, I'll copy over the custom name because I think my designation and custom name in my case can be the same, but you can choose for your threads what you'd like. And then our pitch. All right, so there's our threads per inch. And then I simply add in my classes. And we're going to avoid any special symbols here, right? I'd suggest just numbers and letters. And if there's any strange behavior that you're not expecting, then uh, check for special symbols or formulas in any of this. And that can often be the culprit. Now we'll add class information. Okay, once you have typed or pasted the data, uh, don't hesitate to create some temporary formulas and check to make sure that the values are expected and you haven't uh, mistyped anything or if you paste in data, if the columns are flipped between max and min, which sometimes happens, especially with internal threads. Once you have data that you feel good about, let's talk about this physical thread data. I want to make sure that we're on the right profile, which in my case, yep, I'm on uh, British Standard Whitworth. I want to make sure that my uh, flank or thread angle is right. And so I'm going to say 80 degrees, which is what is right for the conduit threads. And then my A value and my A value and my B values are a little bit different. For British Standard and Whitworth, they leave the B value blank. It only applies to A value. So for British Standard Whitworth, all we have to worry about is our A value. And the A value is the number that you multiply by the pitch to get the radius. So if I pull up this conduit diagram here, um, it's 0 0.107 times the pitch gives us our radius value. And so we're gonna say 0 0.107. And then B value, we leave blank. If this were a unified style thread or something that has that trapezoid option, I would make my B value the number that I multiply by my pitch to get the height between the crest and the roots. Okay, so once that's all done, I think we are ready to test things out. We have the right name, we have the right unit, we have the right uh, value for display because we want to show that in the Libre. We gave a new value for the display order. We correctly have data for internal and external. And we're defining this by threads per inch. So we put threads per inch values in this column. We are making sure that we're displaying all this in the UI. Down here, we have our correct sizes. We have a suffix. We have designation and custom names. And then we have all of our data. So this should be good to go. Let's go ahead and save this. And then I'll uh, close my part in a Libre. And after I have restarted a Libre, I've gotten into a new part environment here. And I'll go ahead and make a sketch. And of course, we'll make a circle. Now you can choose to dimension this, or you can make an argument that when you go to apply the external thread and you go to model these things, this will resize to the size that you want, uh, regardless of what dimension you give this circle. So it's up to you and your workflow and what you think is the best way to go about it. You can do an un unconstrained circle, you can fully constrain it, um, whatever you decide. Now, I'll uncheck this filter by selected geometry because right now I don't have that new thread. So I'll uncheck filter by selected geometry and there is my DIN 40430 conduit. Let's say that we wanna go with a nice size like say 21 and I'll check that model button. And there we go, right? We have the modeled conduit just like we were hoping to have. Now I can change this from nominal to max material. And you'll see that it grows substantially. And while that's a pretty abnormal behavior for most threads, uh, this specific standard kind of associates PG21 with a major diameter of 28.3. So the nominal diameter I have set to go to 21 millimeters, well as the Material ones are 28.3. We can adjust that, of course, by adjusting what values we have in our spreadsheet columns. So it's all dependent on what you want to define as nominal and uh, what uh, threads you want to go with. So this looks like it is working exactly the way that uh, it should per the spreadsheet. We have our, all of our different material conditions that are all built in. So we've been able to 
uh, generate this um, exactly as we would hope. So hopefully this is helpful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the Alibre channel. We'll see you in the next one.